Oh. Hmm. I don't have a way to turn you on. To, I don't see your mic come up here. Use uh, Commissioner Sibley's. Okay, well, that's not working either. Huh. No, it just keeps popping off. This one worked. Of course, there's nobody sitting here. Okay. Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Fenster. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Here. Commissioner Barnard. Here. Co Council Member Peck. Here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a uh, full house. <clears throat> um, next order of business is approval of the April 4. Uh, minutes. Do any commissioners have any corrections or comments on those minutes? No. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second. Okay. So uh, minutes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of April fourth by Commissioner Fenster and seconded by commis uh, Commissioner Sibley. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. The minutes are approved. <coughs> um, report from the chair. The only thing I have to report uh, is that uh, they were uh, they were correctly uh, it was correctly identified in the minutes that I said last time that I wasn't going to be here tonight, which is obviously false. Um, <laughs> so I'm making that correction um, now, as in the report to the chair. I will, however, not be at next month's meeting. So um, I will be so, more on time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we can chat afterwards if you like, just for a, a minute or two of prep, if you so good. desire. <laughs> All right. Um, I did uh, note that uh, council did pass a resolution um, Tuesday night, uh, um, as we expected. Um, and thank you for Commissioners uh, Sibley and Barnett for uh, being in attendance at the meeting and saw the, the photograph. So <clears throat> appreciate that, uh, that May is Historic Preservation Month. Uh, okay, com uh, communications from HBC staff liaison. Yeah, they're up. This one was working when we tested it a minute ago, and it's not working now. Haha, <laughs> 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 we have it. <laughs> Okay, I think that is the magic. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. Um, so we are having some technical issues in council chambers that they're working on resolving. So I won't be using a PowerPoint this evening. Um, Maria, I know, has pulled up the, count the commission packet on your screen. So I will be referring to that. Um, as Commissioner Lane mentioned, um, we did have a proclamation this week at City Council for um, Archaeological and Historic Preservation Month. So I am going to pass the official proclamation down and it can make its way to Maria. And she will keep it in the archives. So. All right. Um, Sure, we can scan that and get it to everyone. Just making a note to myself real quick. <laughs> 
All right. So um, one other housekeeping um, um, item. Well, so for, first and foremost, um, at the council proclamation on April 30th, I would like to thank Commissioners Barnard and Sibley for attending. Uh, they were did a great job of representing the commission. Um, another housekeeping item is that our July meeting does fall on July 4th, and um, Maria has worked has looked at other possible dates in the council chambers that might be available. Um, we aren't finding anything currently that would be available for a reschedule, so um, probably need to consider canceling the July 4th meeting as opposed to rescheduling it just from a logistics standpoint, but I will obviously defer to the commission on that item. Um, a few other updates here. Um, we did provide, staff provided an overview of the uh, requested conservation overlay zoning uh, for Historic Eastside Neighborhood Association at the April 23rd meeting, specifically to discuss um, really what the purpose um, process and, and, you know, what the purpose and process for a conservation overlay would be, um, and also to discuss the requested fee waiver by HENA. Um, so we still have some additional work to do. Um, it's not just as simple as a city council or someone saying we, we therefore waive the fees. Um, we do have to do an amendment to the land development code, which would need to be approved um, as a precursor to um, any sort of rezoning fee waiver. So staff is currently working on uh, doing that analysis and uh, putting, you know, getting that information put together for a future update to council. Um, the other item is so Tower of Compassion. I will hopefully be bringing this application to the commission at the June meeting uh, for consideration of landmark status recommendation to the council. That is on my priority list for the June meeting. Um, I did meet with Damien. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, starts with a P, ends with an A. Uh, Pachetta from um, History Colorado, the state uh, historian's office, and we discussed um, the upcoming um, you know, f theme for the sesquicentennial of the state, which is um, history for all, really focusing on indigenous and underrepresented communities uh, in the state of Colorado. And um, one of the interesting and exciting things about the Tower of Compassion is if we do landmark it and it is approved for inclusion on the state register, which um, consensus is there's no reason to think it would not be. Um, it would only be the fourth site in the state associated with Asian American, the Asian American community in Colorado to may be on the state, state register. So um, that is something that's, I think, really interesting and also would be a very important thing for the for the city of Longmont and so I'm working we're going to be working on that to move that forward as well um, survey plan they're still working on it everyone's running behind right now so I'll have a better update at the June meeting right now um, and then earlier this week I did complete our quadrennial CLG review with Lindsay Fluelli Fluelline, whose name I always botch, um, at History Colorado. Um, so we are, I think, good to go for the next four years on that one. So with that, um, I think that's all I have on my general um, uh, report. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, one item I would note, in our January meeting, we did reschedule the July HBC to the 11th. Yes, so. and so the challenge that we have found is, um, it's the advisory. yeah, the problem is there's we can't we can't get into this room because there's enough we can't get into this space because there is another um, board that's in here. So um, we'll let's see if we can find some other options that would um, be accessible for Longmont Public Media since they have to record the meetings. Um, but that, that is the challenge we're having because we were looking at trying to do it on the 11th. Um, we're just coming up with some logistical challenges. So, And I, I can, from my perspective, if there's nothing, you know, we don't have a COA or something to review, that's fine. But uh, I don't want this survey no. plan to just kind of sort of keep slipping and slipping and slipping. Nope. Um, so that's my biggest uh, concern. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Barnard? 
Yeah, I guess, well, first, is, is it possible to meet at the museum, or? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. So, um, Maria, can, Maria, if you could take a look. Have you t looked at that no, space? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. The 10th is open, I believe, July 10th, a Wednesday. Here. Okay. What's? I can, I, I'll make sure. Is a straw vote of anyone who has an issue? Yeah. Mostly heads? Well, I, I was going to say, is, it, is there a possibility of doing it uh, remotely on the 11th? Like we were doing it COVID? Oh, I don't know if that system is set up. Yeah, it's, done now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's a little bit challenging to do now okay. with like that. But um, we'll take a look at some other venues and have an update at the June meeting. Okay. Sure. And it, it sounded like people, the, the, the 10th might be an option. Again, if we can get the survey plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the agenda and keep that moving. I think mm -hmm. that's something. My goal is to have that as yeah. an item. Um, at least have a serious update on the on the June meeting as well. So, right. all right, thanks. Okay, uh, we had, uh, uh, we had a couple comments were made at the last meeting, and from you and from Steve and, and from the mayor that, that there had been some contact with respect to a article this month in the paper and. Uh, I think you had said that the staff had been approached and was putting together some information. I think it's in the minutes. I'm going to read yeah, it to you. Yeah, there was a there was an article in yep. the there was uh, an article. Times. Yeah. Yes, uh, it was. Yes, thank you for jogging my memory. Mm -hmm. It was uh, regarding the Tower of Compassion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. not about the month. No. Okay. No, but it was generally about that the Tower. That was what the article. That's what the discussion was with you. Uh, I think it was actually more about the Kanemoto project. Okay. Yeah. But that did come out, uh, you know, what are, a handful of days after the hearing. That that over the weekend, I think. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Yep. Uh, Commissioner Jacoby. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I did watch the last city council meeting online, and they. It sounds like, as far as the historic east side. They said they were considering a code change so that all neighborhood groups could uh, have a fee waived if they were to uh, decide to pursue a conservation overlay. Uh, is city Con maybe the mayor? You maybe you could tell me. Are you not Are you aware that the Historic Preservation Commission unanimously voted? Uh, to recommend that several months ago? Okay, so mm -hmm. the council already knows that then. That's what I was wondering, because that's, I think, important to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? No, all right. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, now we're into public invited to be heard for topics other than what we have on our agenda. And seeing only our one applicant in the audience and no public, we'll uh, go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, and then we'll move on to, or the public invited to be heard, sorry. Uh, move on to our public hearing, which is a certificate of appropriateness for the Carlson Farm Building Relocation Plan. And um, I just want to disclose uh, for the commission that um, uh, Mr. Bestall and I are both on the Economic Development Partnership. Uh, we're both board members. I don't see that as being a conflict of interest uh, in any way for myself to make it, you know, to act in, on this board. But I want to make sure all the commissioners are aware of that. And if anyone has an objection, okay, thank you. All right. Um, so, do we have a staff presentation then? Uh, we do. So, I'll be basically talking you through the report and the attachments in the absence of uh, functioning screens okay. uh, for a PowerPoint presentation. So, um, this really is more of a housekeeping type of COA, for, for lack of a better way of putting it. So, um, the owner of the historic Carlson Farm has uh, requested a certificate of appropriateness um, for building relocation um, of the historic buildings as was previously approved. Um, so the original COA for um, the building relocation was approved in, 2020, in 2021 um, and it did expire uh, last year 
And the original COA did state that buildings be moved in relation to each other to the eastern portion of the lot as close as possible to the existing layout and spacing between the structures. Um, so included in your packet is a final relocation plan um, that, ha you know, to scale um, that was submitted as part of this application. And so effectively, you know, relocation of these buildings is um, necessary for further development on the other portions of the site. The landmark status for the property was amended um, late 2022 to um, apply, make sure to basically amend the landmark uh, um, designation so that it only applied to the structures as opposed to the, the larger property. So the relocation plan submitted by Mr. Bestall, um, which is going to be attachment two in your packet, is um, I think satisfies the criteria um, that was established or the condition that was established by the commission back in 2021 um, that the buildings be relocated basically relative to where they currently are. Um, and the relocation plan, I think, shows that very well. So um, with that, Mr. Bestall is available to answer any questions uh, um, that you may have of him. But otherwise, we'll stand by for any questions or discussion from the commission. OK. Any questions for staff? No? OK. Mr. Bestall, do you have anything you'd like to add? Or it's your opportunity. Just that we're excited about where we are now, and that I was thinking that the second certificate of appropriateness, which was a year later, roughly, I guess. Is that a microphone? Yeah. You can't hear me? <laughs> I'll speak up. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, maybe I just need to get under the cone of silence here. Um, I think, um, no, I was just going to say we're excited about where we are. And we have uh, building permits um, pending the relocation to where they need to go, as, as you all directed us to, and they conform to that. Um, it really was my mistake, probably, because I was thinking the second certificate of appropriateness still covered us. And we've, we've got, it's, I think we have six months left on that, but uh, we, we, I would just would appreciate extending the, the 21 one. So we have another two years. These things always take a little longer than expected. We have, uh, we're in the preliminary plat process. We're actually at the final plat. So we think our next submittal will um, subdivide the property and we've done all the infrastructure. So things have been moving along. We ran in place for a while because we're tied to fourth, the, filing, the fourth filing, the Wallace edition, uh, filing. And uh, that's good because the infrastructure will interlock and we've, we've been coordinating with staff on that. So. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the applicant? No? OK. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, any board discussion? Yeah. Well, just Commissioner just I'd Barnett? make a oh, motion oh. To, uh, um, to renew the certificate of appropriateness per the staff recommendation. I'll second. Okay. I have a motion to approve the extension by Commissioner Barnard and, excuse me, seconded by Commissioner Norton. Any further discussion? No? Then uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. So motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have uh, new business uh, commission interviews. We have an update on a potential new commissioner. Uh, we do have one applicant for uh, Historic Preservation Commission this application cycle. Um, with that, we would need a we need to establish a review committee that will meet sometime in May and make a recommendation to City Council um, regarding this particular applicant. So I will turn it over to the commission to discuss who would like to be. So is this a thing where you need basically two people? Pretty to, much, to yeah. volunteer? So it's not a real meeting, but it's OK. All right. And I, I'm going to unvolunteer myself because I'm not going to be here. So um, now I need two, two volunteers. OK, C uh, Commissioner Barnard. I think I can do it as well. 
Okay, Commissioner Barnard and Commissioner Norton. Great. Volunteer, thank you for volunteering. Okay, so that'd be just something that uh, you would coordinate. Correct. Kind of I will okay. uh, coordinate with um, both Commissioners Barnard and Norton, and can very well be something we could do via Teams or something like that as well. So we'll make it as smooth as possible and efficient as possible for everyone. So I'll uh, reach out probably Monday on that one for you. Um, I feel like last time we did this, you guys had some pre-written questions. Is that still how we're? I will have to go back into the records and see how we did it the last I time. See, I could see if I have anything. Okay. Yeah, we had a little scorecard or something actually. Uh, yeah, I want to say there mm -hmm. was a score sheet, so I'll have to go back into our records and, and take a look at how we handled things previously and uh, get with you on Monday for that. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you. And thank you, Commissioners Barnett and <coughs> Norton, for volunteering. All right. Uh, let's see. We had a discussion last week about, or last month, about uh, solar and historic properties and it looks like we've got uh, some more information in the packet so jennifer you want to walk us through that sure so um again as we discussed um at the last meeting you requested a couple of um, you requested some additional samples of guidelines relating to solar systems in historic districts um, we did find two, I think, good ones. Um, one, the National Alliance of Preservation Commissions has actually some sample guidelines, so that's a handy-dandy cheat sheet there as well. Um, and then the City of Denver also has um, some really good ones as well. So I included the section of um, the Denver guidelines relating to um, solar material, solar sustainability, and specifically solar. Um, panels and I also included that particular sample guidelines from the um, National Association or National uh, sorry National Alliance of Preservation Commissions so um, that is for your reference and if that is something we want to um, either of those we would like to adapt to meet our requirements and put the city of Longmont seal on I'm happy to put that together um, for consideration at a future meeting for formal for formal uh, guidelines thanks I, I I ran through these I didn't um, I didn't notice anything that necessarily um, contradicted right one or the other I, I think I, I think they're both really good um, and and a really good foundation that we could use. I would probably be in favor of picking one and just saying use one of the two and to avoid sort of any potential confusion. That would be my sort of thought. But uh, interested to hear what if anybody else yeah, has an opinion or has any comments about the proposed guidelines. Oh, there we go. Okay. There you go. All right. Thank you. Um, my impression was that the uh, guideline. Oops. Ooh, don't that disappeared. Uh, the Denver guidelines seemed a little more specific to me, um, and but very uh, amenable to what we would be doing. And I would lean more towards using the the Denver guidelines, uh, I think, than the the others, which were more. Generic, which again, if we want to pursue it to leave more flexibility, maybe that the the um, uh, guidelines from there, there, the uh, National Alliance of Preservation Commissions, I, that looked a little more generic to me. If we wanted to uh, embrace more flexibility, but I thought the Denver guidelines were very good, and uh, you know, to borrow a brain, I mean, they worked on it. You know, I I I'd be happy to use the Denver guidelines. So, so if we wanted to sort of for, formally adopt one of these, we, we'd, we'd do that as part of a little, as, as a public hearing process here, or? 
you know, I'll have to take a look at that because they are, um, I mean, I, the commission should be the one adopting the guidelines. Um, it's just a matter of, it wouldn't necessarily be an ordinance. It may just very well be via a motion. Um, so let me get with Jeremy and um, determine the most uh, legally defensible way of doing that. And I'll get back to you in the June meeting. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Barnett. Um, well, I, well, we have, I think we have two possibilities here. One is the a kind of a generic. One is a, this is a good starting place for local preservation <coughs> commissions. Okay, so that's what it is, a starting place. And then the other one is a big, you know, a big city uh, decision, which gets into a lot of detail. So I guess my question would be, can we take a look at Louisville or, or um, some other comparable uh, city to Longmont, uh, which may not want to go into in the detail that Denver did, may not do the same issues as Denver, so maybe the, more like our type issues. So realistically, there aren't a lot of places that have adopted specific guidelines for dealing with um, solar panels and other sustainability e efforts. Um, it's, it's something that's really being looked at a lot more now, but um, I did have uh, my associate planner, Melanie, she, she did um, a lot of research on this, and these were the two, she, really the two she found in our area. You know, Boulder, Boulder has some, but not as quite as specific. As, not as specific as I would have to go back and look at it. Ones, They're a little bit more global. Sustainability. Not as global as the, yeah, the interior ones? They, I think they were about that. I would have to go back and take a look at them. These were really the two kind of most specific to solar guideline sets that we've that she was able to find uh, Commissioner Fenster yeah um, it occurs to me that we might be well served if we adopted a set of guidelines as a template <coughs> and then worked from there then we would have uh, something to go on <clears throat> and it would advance the cause at least through step one um, because right now we're just talking about having something, but uh, we haven't put anything into our uh, lexicon. And again, I'll, I'll check with legal and get their um, get their opinion as far as the best way to go about this. From my my thinking, is it it may because this is such an evolving um, area that it might serve us well to adopt something that's a bit broader and as you know technology comes along and different things are available incorporate them accordingly but in terms of how gui you know, guidelines sometimes you, if you get excessively specific they can sometimes become cumbersome and very difficult to implement and, and apply yeah, I, I actually liked the, um, the I'm going to get it right here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't find it. NAPC, we'll just yeah, use NAPC, the acronym. Okay, okay. <laughs> perfect. Um, any, there it is, any, NAPC. I liked their guidelines uh, because they, were, they, they felt to me like specific enough, right? They, 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 were, they were clear. Uh, primary ele elevations, this is our recommendation, secondary elevations, right? Uh, what you can do on other the structures, what if you can do if, if it's detached, and then what not to do under any circumstance is really right. clear, too. I mm -hmm. think that is, is maybe as important as anything, right? Just making it really clear what, what is not recommended. Um, and, and I kind of felt like that, I, I mean, for the, uh, so, Tiny little aside, I, sp I, I spent some time on a planning commission a bunch of years ago that, that spent an inordinate amount of time making a wind uh, turbine <laughs> regulation uh, in response to one person's installation of a wind turbine. And then we never had another application in the next 10 years around wind turbines. And so, you know, I think you can get too far into the weeds with some of this stuff. If we have a good 
set of guidelines that pretty clearly say this is the intent and this is really what you can't do, uh, then it leaves enough jur enough sort of, you know, the staff can make a determination if it's if it looks like it's pretty easily falls within this, they can grant the COA. If it's if staff has uh, a sense that well this might be a little sticky I don't know I'd rather have the commission you know we're gonna feel more comfortable bringing it to the commission then then that's part of why we're here as a commission mm -hmm. to to sort of make a judgment call as to whether it's um, whether it's appropriate or not so my leaning would be towards towards uh, using the the NACP standard as a as a good guideline and then not worrying too much about weeds and details that's my two cents <laughs> Uh, you know. yeah. Okay, Commissioner Sibley. Yeah, I was just going to say I like theirs as well, um, and I really liked that it called out the different types of systems. Um, that's what we have now, basically, but to your point, there could be more. So that, to m my mind, if it labels three, that means, hey, if there's something else out there, bring it up. <laughs> so I kind of liked how that was set. So I agree. Commissioner Barner. Yeah, could you ask the staff to look at the Breckenridge um, uh, ordinance that was adopted? Okay. So I think the, the balance here is between historic and green. And, you know, to find it, and that's the, and just a very, you know, 30 second search. This was the, a big discussion in Breckenridge between the two. And they wanted okay. both, and they tried to figure out how to do that. I think it was finally adopted. I can't didn't have time to find that out, but it was proposed and expected to be adopted in the article I saw. Okay, I'll, I'll send I'll send you that article too. Great, so. Oops. Uh, Mayor Peck. Thank you. Um, just my input. Uh, I would think that with the NAPC, as technology evolves, they would be more apt to give guidelines, whereas a municipality that made up their own uh, would be struggling with the technology as well and maybe not put us in that position down the road. So. Thank you. Let's see, Commissioner Jacoby. I think, yes, both sets of guidelines are very good. Um, and that the idea of approaching it with more general guidelines, especially since we're just starting, makes a lot of sense. My, my one concern that I had, which is why I was thinking about the, the Denver guidelines, was they were a little more specific and restrictive. For example, um, just the idea of setting solar panels back from the eaves a, a certain distance in the front of a house. Um, they address that the na whatever whatever <laughs> did not really address that and if someone came to us as you know with a proposal um if we adopted the more general guidelines but we would like to see say the solar panels back a little bit to add it after they come to us with the application would seem more difficult to me than if they came, we had that already in the guidelines, and we said we are willing to waive that because of whatever circumstances. That's the, the main reason I was thinking the Denver guidelines were better, because they were more complete. And given that kind of circumstance, it would be easier, I think, to waive a guideline than to add something at the 11th hour. But uh, I agree. I mean, the technology is changing to have overly specific guidelines is, is uh, not necessary. Well, if, if this is something that needs to get back into you know staff's court for a little bit to to see and and come back with a recommendation of how this would get implemented, maybe that's also an opportunity for commissioners. We want to take a little bit closer look at the Denver and uh, like you said, Commissioner Jacoby, if there's you know if there are three thing or you know some num some small number of extra pieces that we like, uh, we potentially could could do a hybrid without. I just don't want to get into something that's just so crazily detailed, right? We don't need another demolition ordinance exercise. <laughs> we just. <laughs> that cured me. Uh, <laughs> but but it's a it's a fair point, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. 
All right, any other discussion? No? All right, well, thank you for bringing that. that that's great. I mean, it's, I think it's really encouraging that there's something out there that I think gets us on some pretty good footing without a lot of effort. Great. So thanks for finding that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, so now we're just down to uh, the end of the show here. A any um, comments from commissioners? No? no? Okay. Uh, our city council representative, Mayor Peck. Any? No? Okay. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, with that, then, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, okay. I, I heard the one closer, so I'm going to go with um, a motion by Commissioner Fenster and seconded by Commissioner Norton by a hair. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming out for the evening. Thanks again. That was great. Thank you. <laughs>